right, everybody, this is Bo. We're back in the sports lounge, man. Wasn't Jerry Moore pretty incredible from Appalachian State University? Well, we're going to follow that up with another coach named Marty Schutzel from Mercyhurst College. He's going to talk about his program, brand new conference, and let us know what is all going on. How you doing, coach? Well, I'm doing well. Hey, man, you had a pretty good holiday season, and now you're in brand new conference. It's got to feel like brand new for you. Well, it's, we, we sort of started a new job here without uh, having to move our home, which is always a, a good thing to do. And uh, <laughs> so we're, um, you know, we're excited about the changes. We're going to miss some of the things that uh, we're leaving, but we're looking forward to where we're going. Absolutely. Now, um, what caused the move and change like that? A little background information for listeners who might not know. Well, we're moving from the GLIAC Conference, which is a predominantly a Michigan, state of Michigan conference, to the PSAC, Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference, uh, which is in the state of Pennsylvania, just geographically for our college as well as football and our recruiting, it is a much better fit, um, being that we are in the state of Pennsylvania. So I think that was the number one thing. There's The move benefits every part of what we're trying to do football-wise, uh, and I think it also benefits the school from the admission standpoint. standpoint. Now, you've got some nice recruits that you signed up and getting ready for this new season. Uh, let's talk a little bit about some of the new signings. Well, we, we, um, we on signing date, we had a, a good group of guys commit to us. Uh, we we're looking to uh, improve ourselves up front on the defensive line, both, uh, both from the standpoint of quality and quantity, so we were able to get uh, four or five guys there. Uh, most of them played both sides of the ball, um, but at the same time, uh, we're uh, excited about uh, uh, a defensive lineman uh, named Sorrell, who's out of Franklin High School uh, in uh, Franklin, PA. Had a great senior year, all conference, both sides of the ball. And we feel strongly that he's going to come in physically and be able to play right away because he's just spent a whole lot of time in the weight room. And, you know, you can see he's there in terms of um, being ready to play. Uh, on the you know, offensive side of the ball, we spent a little bit more time, some skill positions, uh, and um, I think we got uh, a couple of good running backs. Uh, our running back will be a senior next year, and we got another guy behind him. But uh, we're, we continue to try to improve our run game, so uh, I think we need to uh, have depth uh, in in the backfield. Uh, T.J. McCaster and, and a player named Drew Jones both had great senior years at their places. And then the last area, which was a priority for us, no, not in a certain order, was the defensive backfield. And we felt we uh, signed three very good players, uh, from, uh, one from the state of Indiana, Rodney Dale, and then two players from here in Pennsylvania. So uh, you know, we definitely we feel like we got better, and that's what you want to do after you come out of the recruiting season. It's for me as a as just a fan and someone who follows football, and I see the list of top hundred prospects and not hundred prospects. Um, over my last thirty years of of following football, I, I don't put any weight into top prospects because every time I see a high school kid play football at a high school squad and they roll over their squad, my first question is: Is he really that good, or is the other team really that bad? <laughs> I mean, um, how how do you go and engage someone's strengths? Um, I think the linebacker and I think the O-line and the D-line are the easiest ones to pick because of size and, and up front. But for those specialized, you know, offensive specialists like quarterback and receivers, I always find it's hard for a coach to really gauge and, and to see the impact they have. How do you go about that? Well, I, you know, I think you're right. There's certain rankings that uh, they come from somewhere and there's some validity to it. But uh, you just never know until a guy gets here how, you know, what kind of foundation he has for learning football and we try to get it uh, enough done during the recruiting visit where we feel like we have a, a an idea of what not only physically they're capable of doing but uh, from the football standpoint um, you know, we sort of say the FAT the football analogy test where do they fit in and how quick will they be able to pick up the system uh, you know and this is why what ends up happening is you recruit somebody who you think is one of the top recruits, and it may take him a year or two to get on board with what you're doing. Uh, and then uh, every school gets surprised um, at other times when they end up, you know, having somebody come on that uh, is just a, ends up having being much better than they anticipated early uh, because they've, you know, all those other 
things that go in, not just the physical part, but all those other things. Uh, you know, the freshmen in high school or in college after they graduate, they go through a lot of changes. And uh, obviously they're going away to school and a lot of adjustments, new classes, new, you know, new people. So uh, there's so many things that are thrown into that mix for them. Uh, it's a challenge. It's always fun to see who, who develops early. Yeah, and it's it's it is funny because uh, when you watch these freshmen come on campus, and they were the big dogs in their col- in their you know high school teams at one time, and if they have a chip on their shoulder, that thing gets righted right off the first day of practice because college practice is not high school practice by any means. You're 100 percent right, and and I think there's always a uh, a good way to come into camp for a new student. Um, you know, I think everyone has a different personality, obviously, but. Uh, sort of like us, you know, for our freshmen to come in this year, the best thing you can do is uh, you know, listen a lot, say a little, watch <laughs> the older guys, watch the older guys, and you know, and, and learn from them because they've been through the ropes. And you know, and ironically, or coincidentally, we're in the same boat. We uh, are the, the peace act. You know, we um, we're gonna uh, say a little listen a lot because we've got a lot to learn about the conference uh, and uh, you know to just work hard and, and try to you know earn the respect and improve our play within the conference during the course of the fall absolutely there's so much changes going on to figure out where you're going to set up where you know how do they run their sets um and match it up with your with your staff that you have now how many different hats do you wear on this team um, well, you know, obviously, uh, the past couple of years, along with being the head coach, I've also taken over the responsibility of calling the offense and so basically coordinating the offense. But we have a couple of great young coaches that have uh, really done a good job and made things, uh, you know, take the burden off of me and, and breakdowns and, and try to do those things. Uh, and, you know, really that's the biggest thing. You know, I try to be a part of what we're doing on every uh, on each side of the ball, uh, special teams included. But I also realize that our time for any one person is pretty uh, limited, and I couldn't do justice, you know, trying to be heavily involved in, uh, in every area. So um, I was more involved prior to co- taking over the play calling um, duties and that would be going back to my first four years here. But, you know, over the last two years, I've done uh, probably a little bit less. Um, but feel comfortable about going back and trying to get involved a little bit more because of the development of our young coaches. Now, Coach Litz, um now on this, this new squad that you have, um, who are going to be the leaders from last year that have stepped up after the seniors left? Who is going to come forward and be those foundation that were developing it last year? No, we return. Uh, I, we return more all conference players. We that we're moving to a new conference, so I guess you know we're all conference in, in the GLIAC. But we've got three guys coming back from last year's team that was uh, they were um, all conference in Zach Wild, Theo Hall, and Richard Stokes. And I think those three will really lay the foundation because one, they do work hard. And two, they're very good football players, and I'll say it's it's in that in that order. So I think the players look to them. We also returned three guys from last year's team that were going to be seniors, and uh, they got injured. Or I should say, two guys that they got injured before the season started, and that was uh, Jimmy Kokrak and Andre Dawson. So they're fifty-year seniors coming back, and we were looking for them last year to be leaders. So I don't think anything's going to be different this year. As fifth-year guys, they even have a better perspective. And then another guy we lost for the season last year early was Brian 